Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. The uh, keynotes this afternoon, uh, Meg Whitman, uh, was just on a panel with uh, Thomas Friedman and Intel and Satya Nadella of Microsoft, and uh, pretty interesting. I, it was it was interesting. Uh, I'm here with Jeff Frick to note how passionate Meg is about politics and government. Wow, yeah. is she comfortable? I'd vote for her. Bobby Patrick is here. We've been drilling down into cloud all day. Bo Bobby is the CMO of the HP Cloud division. A lot of new announcements coming on. A lot of action in HP Cloud. Bobby, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So, um, yeah, good keynotes, good, good, it was a good refresher, you know? Um, a lot of these keynotes are just products pushing, right. pushing, pushing, we had some of that earlier, but I thought it was a good eye-opening, uh, refreshing right. kind of discussion, so uh, it was very worthwhile. But at any rate, you're relatively new to, uh, to HP. Two very months. Very new, actually. Two so, months, uh, yeah. How's it going? It's great, it's exciting. I joined it at, uh, at like a, a great time for the company. Uh, we were gearing up for the big launch of our new brand, HP Helion, uh, that, uh, that uh, was launched on May 7th, so just uh, a little over a month ago. And uh, we hit the, the market hard globally. Uh, it's a complete pull together of all of our products and services around cloud under a single brand. Uh, customers love it. And, uh, and it's really reiterated our commitment to OpenStack. And uh, you know, it's great, uh, HP announced a billion dollar commitment to uh, HP Helion over the next two years, so it's backed by some it's a big funding, uh, and it's a great time to come in. So I, I saw that, what is that, what, help us unpack that billion dollars, you know, a billion dollars is a big number. Right. Uh, it's a popular number. Right. <laughs> right. Even well, Warren Buffett, right? Or, or, or I say Warren Buffett, he, he underwrote the whole thing, the March Madness, right? right. Giving away a billion dollars for the perfect uh, bracket. Right. You know, no, no longer a million does it, it's got to be a billion. So right. what is that billion, what does it go to, what does it comprise? Yeah, I mean it goes to R&D, uh, we're, we're the most the most active corporate sponsor behind OpenStack, mm -hmm. which is the fastest growing open source project on the planet. We, are, we have more contributors, we have more uh, team leads for the different projects. Um, and so we're working with the community. Uh, we're hiring OpenStack experts, uh, always looking for the best in the world, all around the world. And uh, we're then hardening and, and curating it and making it commercial now uh, with our support. And we believe it's the underpinning of, of the future of what we call hybrid cloud, the ability to put some of your information, some of your applications within an enterprise, some in a public cloud, uh, some in different countries that might matter for compliance reasons, and to be able to move around between those different clouds in a very easy fashion. So uh, this money is going to that R&D, to the skills, um, and to you know, truly a global, global launch. So when you think about the, the sort of messaging for right. HP Cloud, what do you want customers to think about in the, the Helion brand and the HP Cloud? Yeah, the, the number one thing is commitment to open standards. So we are, uh, and if you heard Martin Fink today talk about uh, HP Labs and their commitment to open source, uh, we're all in on open source. We believe it's the way to deliver innovation faster. We can uh, bring to market te new technologies faster to customers. So we're all into open source. We are committed to the projects that matter to the next 20 years of IT. And uh, so that commitment has to be real though. We have to be to prove it, we have to say, you know, you can run our, our software on other hardware. We think it'll be, we'll have some optimal integrated solutions for you using our entire stack, but this is about, this is about eliminating vendor lock-in, which is one of the biggest challenges that IT departments have faced in the last 20 years. And so I think the commitment behind the open um, is at the core of our messaging. So we should mention, so Martin Fink gave a, well, I really liked his presentation. Right. I have been saying for, I don't know now, four years, that HP's got to get back to its roots, right. which are Invent. Right. And I have not heard until today something that excited me about invention. And we saw it today. Right. Now, invention is not easy. We right. all, we've talked about a lot that the previous administration cut, cut, cut right. to the bone. Right. It takes a long time to turn that sneeze. But, but we saw it today. Fink was put into that job for a very particular reason. I said, Patel. I tweeted out two things. One, it's a guy who's going to commercialize inventions yeah. into the marketplace, and two, there's going to be a heavy systems focus. So he basically showed a little leg on the, the machine, which eventually is probably going to be powering your clouds, right. but he also announced HP is going to 
put forth a new open source operating system optimized for non-volatile memory, not only a blank sheet of paper that they're going to work on with universities, but also a Linux derivative, a stripped down Linux derivative, right. and one for Android. That was exciting. Yeah, I think what's great also is the cloud business actually falls under Martin. So our, our, our entire business worldwide and our cloud effort, our R&D, our product development, is all under Martin who runs our CTO of our, of our HP labs. And when you look at the problems he's addressing with the machine and what he's going after, it's, it's going after the massive scale challenges of the internet, right? And the massive scale challenges of the cloud and the day to deluge that we're all, that we're all facing within the internet of things. And so, you know, uh, what's great is by being a part of the labs and being part of Martin's organization, you know, we're, we're injecting that thinking into our cloud, we're injecting it into our innovation, and, uh, and you can see a roadmap here, right? You can see this, this whole new architecture. You talked about an architecture that's been in existence since uh, 1950, I think it was called the von Neumann architecture, all the way to now, and you know, the with copper at the core, you know, the world's in need of a new architecture, and so it's great to be part of that. That was, that was a cool talk. You talked about electrons, photons, and ions. Electrons compute, compute, compute photon, <laughs> photons communicate, and ions right. store. Right. And that, in, in essence, is the future direction of where HP is going with right. the machine. Right. Massive, massive memory, blowing away the volatility hierarchy, blowing away, ultimately, slow spinning disks, using memory store right. as the platform for future systems. I love it. Yeah, and, I, and he mentioned also, but one thing that's close to my heart is the distributed mesh. If you saw that uh, yep. distributed mesh, where where different different hardware software combinations sit at different points of the you know the network, and they work together, you know, compute and data, and that's really hybrid cloud. It, you know, hybrid cloud is putting compute workloads in certain areas and having data stored and distributed for maximum availability, and doing that you know with self service and doing that in a way that you know IT organizations can scale effectively. Yeah, I, I think that you know, as a marketing person, you realize that customers want to know uh, that you're relevant for their future. Right. And you know, as much as I love things like store once, it's not the future of computing. Right. And it comes out of HP Labs. This potentially is. So that's got to have customers really excited. This is really the first time you've unveiled it. Right. Massively on a public scale. But right. Maybe you're talking, you know. And that's why. That's why I joined the HP. I saw that uh, coming out uh, a few months ago, uh, and. The, 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 the new style of IT thinking where we're saying, you know, we're radically going to be at the core of helping IT transition from you know, the old style very inward to a customer-centric style to one you know, where you're delivering the customer, you know, consumer experience in the business world. And I saw that with HP and it got me excited and I, I joined on board. A lot of upside. Yeah, the other part that Martin mentioned, not only do you have the power of HP Labs, but, but leveraging open source as well, which right. was probably not a tool in the arsenal uh, not that long ago, to really bring the power of a large community who's engaged, who can attack right. specific problems and make that a core piece of the, uh, of the process. Yeah, if you think about it, we've got thousands of the world's best developers, right? Uh, the millennial developers, these guys working all around the clock, working on you know, our core cloud future, called OpenStack, contributing to that, right? Including our experts, and then we're taking that and then bringing it to market, you know, and then providing that 24-7 support, testing and hardening it, you know, doing the things you need to do to help an enterprise feel comfortable with that decision. You could never do that, we could never do that and deliver that kind of innovation on our own. Just if we couldn't afford it, we wouldn't be able to deliver on it. You know, these are the best minds of the world who are contributing to this and we're, we're all in with OpenStack. So you talked about, we talked about what do you want the brand to stand for, and you said open, no lock-in. Can open source innovation occur at a pace with somebody who's got full control of a stack. It's much faster, actually. I mean, this is, the, you watch the innovation of OpenStack, it's only, what, four years old. We just had the four-year birthday of OpenStack. Already, that's an entire cloud computing platform. You've got databases and service projects like Trove. You've got object storage projects like Swift and, and block storage like Cinder. You know, all of these things are being worked on by people around the world. You could never deliver, and so what's happening is, the pace of innovation with an open source project like OpenStack is like, a, it's a hockey stick. And, and so I think, yeah, I think if we did this ourselves, we, or, or anyone else, you would never be able to deliver the kind of innovation that's coming to market now. But we talk about some of the announcements, you guys. Yep. Um, why don't we actually go back a month, right. talk about Helion, and then work through today. Um, you got some HPC announcements, right. you got the network, you know, for Helion. Right. So start with Helion. So what's great about Helion is, is it, it really brought together a lot of great products and services on the cloud that already exist and it took OpenStack and it was our first foray into the market with an OpenStack distribution. Mm -hmm. And what's important actually is we have technology, one called HP Cloud System, that is actually the most popular cloud platform right now, private cloud platform uh, on the planet. 
uh, about uh, almost 2,000 users right now, 2,000 companies, third of the Fortune uh, 100 right now, using that technology. So what it is is a proven, capable platform used by big banks and others. We're injecting OpenStack into that so that you can, that you can over time, scale that out with new applications. And so the launch really was about pulling all the pieces together, pulling our support and services together, and saying to a customer you know, with confidence, here's, here's our cloud portfolio, and here's how we can take you on a journey at your pace, and accelerate that journey to take advantage of that cloud portfolio. And that was really the launch a month ago. Today, uh, in, at Discover, I mean, only a month later, we've already done a number of great things. One, one is we brought out OpenStack, the commercial version. So we've launched Community One. You can download it. There's been thousands of downloads already. The commercial version's coming out now. And we announced pricing. And what we are all about here, this is one really, really important. We are about uh, accelerating the adoption of OpenStack throughout the enterprise. We're, we're about breaking down the barriers that have, that have inhibited uh, the proliferation of this great technology. So one of those things today was the price point. We announced $1,400 per year per server, all in price point for HP Helion OpenStack. And that's critical because this is a scale out, a scale out product. You're going to have ten, dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of these all around the world. And so the price point is, it's disruptive, it's the lowest on the planet, um, and, and you know, we said it's going to be simple and easy. We're not going to do all of this good, better, best packaging. It's, it's super easy, and that's a big part of today. The other part of today is we said, you know what, we're going to work with partners, and we're going to deploy this all around the world. And that was the Helion Network announcement, um, along with uh, AT&T, and the British Telecom, and Intel, and uh, that's, that's just huge for today. Now, now, Helion comprises both on-premise and, and HP public cloud, correct? That's right. So talk about how that pricing works. I mean, I like what you're saying, simple, because cloud pricing is really complicated. Yeah, so we use, we're, the, we're probably the largest user of OpenStack in, in, production, in production today with our public cloud. So we use it and people can consume services from that and buy them on a, on a, on a, you know, on a, on an uh, as-you-go basis. Mm -hmm. But with OpenStack, what you, what, what's really happening is people are able to deploy their own private clouds, right? They're able to, uh, a service provider can deploy and build their own public cloud. So when I talk about the price point, I'm talking about a, uh, a customer building their own cloud, uh, building their own cloud in a third party data center or in one of uh, HP's 82 data centers. And um, that, that price point is, is, is you know, it's easy, easy to use. You can predict it in your business model and feel comfortable about you know, what it's going to cost you know, two, three, four years out. And so, help me understand, let's unpack that a little bit. What am I getting for that $1,400 per? So you get the server? entire, so this is what's amazing. You get a, the entire cloud operating system called OpenStack, right? You get all of the projects now that are part of the OpenStack build. You're getting, a, you're getting an object store. It's, it's a, you know, a la Amazon S3, but in a box called Swift, right? With the Swift API, and you can build that and do that yourself now. You could do that in a way that controls, that gives you full control and full flexibility. Uh, you get database as a service product, you get a compute engine. Swift, Cinder, uh, Grizzly, everything. That's right, Nova the for, for the compute. And so you get all of this in that box, all of this. And you can go deploy this, and you can benefit now from the thousands of developers who are every six weeks putting out new code and, 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 and innovating. So, okay, so all the new innovations will fall under that umbrella and, That's right. and they, any price changes thereafter. You might choose thereafter. to use, you might say I'm just building a cloud storage environment, you might choose to be heavy on Swift, that's what you're doing, but it is all inclusive. And you can use the entire cloud platform or you can build a, a, a storage platform or database as a service platform. That's a different model, clearly. What are customers telling you about that? Yeah, so they, well, they want, they want the control and the flexibility of having their own platform for you know, security reasons, their own for, for compliance, they want to put their data you know, in their own centers, but they're also saying, I want to use public cloud some too. And I like the idea that if OpenStack is here, and OpenStack is here, right, same code bases, I can fairly easily take a workload, take an application and go from here to here and back and forth. That kind of flexibility called interoperability, and that's what's coming down the road with OpenStack underneath, is something that does not exist today and so everybody wants. Make sure I understand, so I'm paying $1,400 per server for that OpenStack instance on premise, and then when I want to access public cloud services, I'm, I'm what? You would pay an S, you, you might want to burst, you might want to right. just go do, you might have some peak demand, you burst out there, you pay for and I would hourly rent that or from monthly, HP you rent it from HP public, public cloud, cloud. Right, or, a, or a partner of ours. Yep. 
Excellent. Uh, now, you ha also had some HPC announcements. Uh, That's right, so there's a number of, what's great is HP now is people are taking Helion OpenStack and they're putting it in their products. So our HPC group, our high performance computing group, said, hey, we want to have a self-service mechanism and we want to be able to scale out some architecture people want in, that, in HPC. So they put OpenStack inside their solution and launch it today, and so it's you know, OpenStack embedded in HPC. Open, hybrid, simple to consume is what I'm That's hearing. right. That's right. Um, good and stuff. predictable. And predictable. All right, good. Dave, Lisa Marie wrote the book on this. So this <laughs> is great. If you don't believe Bobby, uh, Lisa came by, gave me the, right. gave me the book. So it's the uh, OpenStack technology, breaking the enterprise barrier. So you've got to, you got it. It's one of the best, best reads on the planet right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, excellent. No, it's right. So when does it go to the next level? When is it, I'm just buying compute. Pardon? I'm just, I'm just getting capacity. Uh, if you just want capacity, you might you might just build a storage cloud yourself, or you might use the our public cloud storage, or with our Helium network, our partners around the world will be deploying OpenStack, and you can buy it from them. Awesome. All right, we got to leave it there, Bobby. Thanks so much sure. for coming to the cube. Thank it was you. a pleasure meeting Good time. you. Time. Appreciate you. it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. John Furrier is in the house. He's back from San Francisco or San Jose. <laughs> Good to have you back, John. Keep it right there. We're back with John Furrier in just a moment.